Is it Kachi? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Matt Kachi. Hey, congratulations on your new documentary, Madhu. Thank, Thank you. you. More of a congratulations. I know I'm attending the uh, Santa Barbara International Film Festival. I mean, it's being showcased there and going to be coming soon on uh, Disney+. Plus. How do you guys feel about that? Go for it, Kach. Feels great. It feels, uh, it's amazing that uh, this labor of love that we've been involved in for the last uh I'd say since 2020, really, when the first conversation started, uh, three, four years down the road, and and here we are. It's uh, I guess it's a culmination of that dream, and and we're we're really proud and humble at the same time. <laughs> that that is amazing. So tell us what sparked you guys to do uh, this documentary in the first place. Did did you did you discover the video? Uh, you know, it's funny, you know, everyone talks about this viral video and we actually discovered the video before it went viral. I mean, very, maybe a week before, five days before our producer, Jamie Patrickoff, who I've worked with for many years, um, texted me the video with no context, you know, and he, it didn't at the time even say Anthony or Nigeria. It was like, there was no context and I was you know, coming from a place of curiosity. I just wanted to know more about this kid. There was something in his body language about just that was this confidence. And I went down the internet rabbit hole who posted this and who reposted and found him. I think within a week I was on a Zoom with him just in his courtyard in, in Nigeria with his family. And then it went viral. Uh, and I think, uh, and everyone wanted to do this story, but I think um, because we didn't jump on the bandwagon um, and we're just purely curious, um, it just, it worked. And uh, it was important to me uh, to collaborate. This is so much of this is a, even though half the films in England as well, the origin story is in Nigeria. And it was really important uh, to me, um, and I thought for the film to collaborate with a Nigerian filmmaker and talk to a few directors. But when I connected with Kachi, I there was no no one else to talk to. And I knew it in the first conversation. I saw a, a, a film that he had made, a, a VR film called Daughters of Chibok. Um, and then when I got on a, a a call, a Zoom with him, I mean, it was just, just I just felt it. His story, re you know, resonated with me. His own Kachi's personal story, and it complemented um, Anthony's story. But I mean, Kachi can speak more to that. Um, and then we were off to the races. You know, it's so much of this is a, a collaboration of cultures, me and Kachi, but also like, you know, our crews in England and our crews in Nigeria, and we had, you know. We have a, a a kid, Anthony, that went from one culture to another. We had two filmmakers from two different cultures. We had our cinematographers, one from England, one from Africa, our crews. And we all kind of collaborated um, to make one cohesive film that I think uh, just was really special. And, and, you know, behind the camera, the experience, um, you know, I, I, I think Kachi and I just learned a lot from each other about life and filmmaking. Pachi? Yeah, I mean, Matt's pretty much said everything. It's like, you know, it was, it was great. You know, the first conversation, you know, Matt shared the idea with me. And I remember going to, because I was on physically on ground at the time, you know, connecting with, with Anthony and just speaking to this young 11-year-old about his dreams and seeing how determined he was to pursue it at such a young age. You know, um, and just to, you know, give you some context, ballet is not a thing in Nigeria. And it's not a thing in poor neighborhoods, you know, where Anthony comes from. You're expected to go out there, hustle and bring bread to the table. You know, ballet is expensive anywhere in the world. How much more in Nigeria? And, you know, so he was being bullied and teased by his friends and peers, but that didn't faze him. And he just said, I, I want to do this. This is this is all I want to do. Um, I really, I personally found that very fascinating and inspiring. 
you know, uh, like what, you know, Matt said about my personal story. I'm a doc filmmaker out of Nigeria. Doc filmmaking isn't also a thing. Hmm. Uh, if you're going to, you know, do anything with the camera, do something else that at least has some uh, promise of of success, right? You know, um, and so when, when, when Anthony was talking to me, I sort of saw myself in him, you know, like this is someone that whose story needs to be told. And it was just one email later to, to Matt. I'm like, yeah, I've, I've spoken to him. I think we can do this. We should do this. It's a great story. And, and like I said, it was a great experience working over this last couple of years and, you know, seeing this kid evolve from a shy, you know, young boy um, into this very confident young man. And, and that's happening in real time, you know, and we're filming every step of the way and you literally see him on screen evolve. Um, I think being witness to that and giving the honor to document that is, is something that uh, this is this is a project that will stay there to, to us for, for a very long time. Absolutely. What, was it easy to convince Anthony, Anthony and uh, his family to uh to reveal themselves to participate in this documentary because you you've gone through many tough subjects you know from bullying or health problems like in in london and so on i mean that's a, a lot of people like to keep that like close to themselves yeah um i mean to respond to that i know matt matt you know can can chip in but um so the, i mean i guess there are two responses to that on the one hand you know that that's why the collaboration um uh, was very, very invaluable, really, in terms of like an understanding of the nuances, um, the environments, the people, the culture, you know, uh, played a great part. But also, before we even turned on the camera, you know, Matt and I, we spent a lot of time virtually and physically just building a relationship and building trust. Um, and And we made it very clear from the beginning that you're not subjects, right? You know, we're we're genuinely interested in 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 your story because it inspires us. Uh, and so, you know, when 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 the character begins understands or comes to the place of acceptance where they feel like I'm not speaking to a guy with a camera, but I'm speaking to a friend, you know, I'm I'm speaking to someone who cares about me. I think it really changes the equation. And 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 at that point, the camera doesn't exist anymore. They're themselves, right? And and we saw this happen many times, you know. And in those moments of vulnerability, and 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 fear and doubt or extreme joy, you know, they totally ignored us. <laughs> it was like we were not there, you know. If you look at like the scene where Anthony comes home for on holiday and the mom wasn't expecting that, and she's just like, he's like if. Like we were not there, you know. So you you know that at that point you you've done something good, and you've really connected with these people on a on a deeper level. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, Matt. Yeah. I don't know if you. Yeah. I mean, I think you said it all. It's like there's two parts to this. Is were they open to being in the film? Yeah, that's different than being vulnerable and open emotionally. That was a process that involved you know trust, and I think Kachi's spot on. Like. We, we kind of were like the first audience, right? We came in with curiosity, empathy. We were genuinely and sincerely interested in this kid, you know, and his family. And, um, but he's still a kid, right? And so he has to gain trust. I mean, Kachi always says it. It's like, at the beginning, you have this 12-year-old kid who, you know, he didn't emote a lot. He didn't say a whole paragraph if we asked a question. Not that he couldn't, he just might not have been comfortable. And we, in real time, watched him grow emotionally, physically, like then it was off to the races, you know? And, and I think Kachi's right, like we, they forgot about the camera, you know? We were just part of the family. Yeah. We ate with them, we hung with them, we, we were with them, you know, we showed up. You know, we weren't going back to some air conditioned uh, trailer, you know, we, we were with them. In the neighborhood there. Yeah. And it's in those moments that, you know, the unexpected happens because, you know, it's a dock. You, you don't, 
there's only so much you can try to construct. You understand what I mean? Like, you know, it's, stuff happens when you're just there in the moment. There were times when we cut some stuff, you know, one third of the way through or, or halfway through just because we you know we're in that moment and like, hey man, bring out a camera, let's just roll, you know, um, and, and capture this. So I think, you know, getting that access and that trust was a big part of making this um, what it is today. Now, I, I, I want to be on, um, you know, honestly is that uh, his move from Nigeria to London, was that just pure coincidence when you guys um, did the documentary that it was just like a it just landed and you guys thought look this is a perfect story or because because I, I was going to say when, when you started it sounded like it was something entirely different the well, I mean, yeah it was it was it's a story of a kid you know who has dreams and we're trying to pursue this trying to pursue his dream and so we're going to be there I mean we knew that there were you know, offers and prospects and opportunities, but we didn't know what was going to happen. I guess that's the beauty about making docs, right? You can't predict what's going to happen. So you got to just embrace it when it does happen. I remember, I think, I hit up Matt, like, yo, man, like, you know, have you heard? And, you know, we talked about it and it was, how many hours did we have to get our act together and and go with him when we pretty, heard the news? Pretty overnight. I mean, like, when we found Anthony, just to be clear, he did not get this offer. We never heard of Elmhurst. He never heard of Elmhurst when that video came out, when we found it. And when we connected with him and started and started filming and when Kachi first went up there, like he hadn't gotten this offer. It so that no really was luck. Luck for him, luck for the film. And and definitely uh, worked out for everyone. So how how did you guys wanted to end this story? Because you know you could you could only follow your subjects for so long. I mean, I guess technically you could follow them <laughs> forever if you need to, but then we wouldn't be watching a documentary yet. <laughs> it seemed like for me, like I think it felt for both of us, Koch, like a natural narrative arc. You want a narrative arc, right? What are you building to? And it seemed like a natural arc to follow his first year at Elmhurst, you know, his first fish out of water, his first year. And knowing that that summer at the end of his school year, he's going to be going back to Nigeria. How's he going to come back to Nigeria? We know he's going to be a different person. Um, I think like, I don't remember when Kachi, we kind of felt like we knew we were going to start and end in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, what happens in between, how it happens, that's, a, you know, that's whatever happens. But, you know, I in documentaries, I always say uh, you're writing it three times, right? You're writing it before you start. You're writing it while you're filming and you're writing it again in the edit, you know. And so you know, have some ideas, but things change. And uh, there, that's the discovery. That's the uh, scary part. The uncertainty but that's the uh authenticity and the beauty of it i think also just to just to you know mention here that um you know the story is a story about you know acceptance and belonging and in nigeria you know the, he wasn't fully accepted you know neither did he feel so much you know because of the teasing and the bullying and then he's taken to this new place where yes they understand what he does. This is what is his passion. But then he also has to fight to find acceptance in this new place, this new cultures, you know, this new people, you know, a new family that he has to sort of like, you know, find his way in. But it's also important that coming back home to Nigeria, you know, is also sort of like, you know, and in that moment, there's that, you know, declaration of self-acceptance. I know who I am. I know what I want. I may not be there yet, but I know that I'm on my path. I'm going to get there. And it was really important for the story that it doesn't end, you know, in England. It ends in Nigeria. It comes back to Nigeria, you know, where it all started, you know, and 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 on those same streets that he had been teased and bullied, you know, on those same streets, he has, you could call it the final performance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So so yeah, it's it it seemed really 
really natural. But again, like what Matt said, you know, you keep writing and rewriting, even in posts, you know, and, and trying different things until you, you get the one thing that feels right. Excellent. Well, one last thing. Ultimately, as audiences have a ch chance to check it out in Santa Barbara and soon on Disney Plus, what is the one most important take you hope they walk away with after watching your film? Dare to dream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tachi always says we share a brain. Uh, what do you think, Tachi? Yeah, man. Dare to chase your dreams. You know, just just chase those dreams. Um, I think that's that's the one thing. This this kid, the same way he inspired us all with the with the video in 2020, you know, um, right in the middle of the pandemic and everyone was just feeling down. And I just saw this kid dancing with careless abandon in the rain. Um, that's the same, you know, so emotion race to power 10 when you watch the film, like, you know, dare to dream. That is true. It, it is a very emotional, lovable film, and it's beautifully shot. So, man, Kachi, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation um, with us. It, you, you brought a beautiful film on onto screen for us. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Gabe. Gabe.